Question 1. What is the appropriate action when you encounter a detour sign while driving on a highway? A. Ignore the sign and continue on your current route. B. Follow the sign's directions to take an alternate route. C. Stop and turn around to avoid the detour. Answer. B. Follow the sign's directions to take an alternate route. Detour signs indicate that the usual route is unavailable, and drivers should follow the alternative provided. Question 2. How should you adjust your driving behavior when approaching a through-traffic merge left sign on a multi-lane road? A. Maintain your lane and speed. B. Merge left to allow merging traffic from the right. C. Speed up to prevent merging traffic from entering. Answer. B. Merge left to allow merging traffic from the right. This sign indicates that lanes are ending or merging is occurring, and it is courteous and safe to allow space for merging vehicles. Question 3. What does a telephone available sign indicate, and how might this information be useful during a long trip? A. There is no real use for this sign in the era of mobile phones. B. It indicates areas where mobile reception may not be available. C. Points to the nearest public telephone for emergencies. Answer. C. Points to the nearest public telephone for emergencies. This can be crucial for drivers who may not have mobile phones or when cellular service is unavailable. Question 4. When driving on a road with a two-way traffic sign, what additional precautions should you take? A. Ignore the sign, as it has no practical implications. B. Increase speed to pass slower traffic quickly. C. Watch for oncoming traffic in your lane, especially around curves. Answer. C. Watch for oncoming traffic in your alert lane, especially around curves. This sign warns that you are on or approaching a section of road where traffic flows in both directions. Question 5. You're on a single lane road and see a slower traffic keep right sign. What does this mean for your driving if you're traveling below the speed limit? A. Pull off the road and let others pass. B. Keep to the right to allow faster vehicles to overtake you safely. C. Ignore the sign as you are driving at a safe speed. Answer. B. Keep to the right to allow faster vehicles to overtake you safely. This sign is used to minimize disruptions in the flow of traffic by keeping slower vehicles on the right. Question 6. How should you handle the situation where you need to make a left turn across a busy intersection without traffic lights? A. Wait for a gap in both directions of traffic before proceeding. B. Turn quickly to minimize the wait time. C. Honk to alert other drivers and proceed. Answer. A. Wait for a gap in both directions of traffic before proceeding. Safety should be the priority, ensuring clear passage without risking an accident. Question 7. What are the legal requirements for yielding to pedestrians when no crosswalks are marked? A. Yield only if the pedestrian has started crossing. B. Pedestrians must yield to you. C. Always yield the right of way to pedestrians. Answer. C. Always yield the right of way to pedestrians. In California, drivers must yield to pedestrians at all intersections, marked or unmarked. Question 8. Describe the procedure for safely passing a motorcycle on a two-lane road. A. Pass closely to minimize time spent next to the motorcycle. B. Ensure there is enough space and pass without decreasing speed. C. Give extra space and pass at a safe speed. Answer. C. Give extra space and pass at a safe speed. Motorcycles are less stable than cars, so it's important to give them plenty of room. Question 9. How do you respond to an emergency vehicle approaching while you are already in the middle of an intersection? A. Continue through the intersection, then pull over. B. Stop in the intersection until the vehicle passes. C. Proceed with your normal driving routine. Answer. A. Continue through the intersection, then pull over. It's safest to clear the intersection quickly and safely, 
then allow the emergency vehicle to pass. Question 10. What steps should you take if your vehicle's anti-lock brakes? ABS. Activate while you are trying to stop. A. Pump the brakes to keep them from locking. B. Continue to press the brake pedal firmly and steer normally. C. Release the brake pedal to deactivate the ABS. Answer. B. Continue to press the brake pedal firmly and steer normally. ABS prevents the wheels from locking up and helps maintain steering control during an emergency stop. Question 11. Explain the importance of following distance and how you should adjust it based on driving conditions. A. Always maintain a minimum of one car length for every 10 miles per hour. B. Decrease following distance at higher speeds for better reaction time. C. Increase following distance in poor conditions to allow more reaction time. Answer. C. Increase following distance in poor conditions to allow more reaction time. More space is necessary to react to sudden stops in adverse conditions. Question 12. You are driving in dense fog. What are the best practices for using your vehicle's lights? A. Use high beams to see further ahead. B. Use low beams and fog lights if available. C. Turn off your lights to avoid glare. Answer. B. Use low beams and fog lights if available. High beams can reflect off the fog and decrease visibility even further. Question 13. What actions should you take if your vehicle begins to hydroplane on a wet road? A. Accelerate to regain traction. B. Steer sharply to counteract the skidding. C. Reduce speed gradually and steer straight or in the direction you want to go. Answer. C. Reduce speed gradually and steer straight or in the direction you want to go. This helps regain control and prevents the vehicle from skidding further. Question 14. Explain the right-of-way rules at a four-way stop when two vehicles arrive simultaneously from opposite directions. A. The vehicle going straight has the right-of-way. B. The vehicle to the left has the right-of-way. C. Both drivers should wave the other through. Answer. A. The vehicle going straight has the right of way. When vehicles arrive simultaneously, drivers turning left must yield to drivers going straight. Question 15. What should a driver do immediately after a tire blowout? A. Brake hard to stop the vehicle. B. Maintain control and pull over safely. C. Continue driving to find a garage. Answer. B. Maintain control and pull over safely. It's important to keep the vehicle stable and stop in a safe location to change the tire. Question 16. Discuss how to safely navigate through a traffic circle or roundabout. A. Enter at high speed and choose any available lane. B. Yield to traffic already in the circle, stay in your lane, and exit safely. C. Stop before entering and proceed when the circle is completely clear. Answer. B. Yield to traffic already in the circle, stay in your lane, and exit safely. Roundabouts are designed to improve traffic flow and reduce accidents. Question 17. What should you do if you accidentally enter a freeway exit ramp thinking it was an entrance ramp? A. Continue to the end of the ramp and merge onto the freeway. B. Back up to the entrance. C. Safely turn around or continue to a place where you can safely turn around. Answer. C. Safely turn around or continue to a place where you can safely turn around. If you find yourself going the wrong way, it's crucial to safely correct your direction. Question 18. How can you safely handle aggressive drivers on the road? A. Respond with aggressive maneuvers to assert your position. B. Ignore the aggressive behavior and maintain your driving. C. Speed up to match the aggressive driver's speed. Answer. B. Ignore the aggressive behavior and maintain your driving. Keeping calm and continuing to drive safely can prevent situations from escalating. Question 19. 
described the process of reporting an accident in California if there are no injuries but significant vehicle damage. A. Leave the scene since there are no injuries. B. Exchange information with the other driver and report the accident to the DMV if damage exceeds $1,000. C. Wait for the police to write a report. Answer. B. Exchange information with the other driver and report the accident to the DMV if damage exceeds $1,000. Reporting is required for significant damages. Question 20. What are the implications of driving under the influence of medication that impairs your driving ability? A. There are no specific legal penalties. B. It is treated the same as driving under the influence of alcohol. C. Only illegal if you are involved in an accident. Answer. B. It is treated the same as driving under the influence of alcohol. Driving while impaired by any substance, including prescription and over-the-counter medication, is illegal. Question 21. When approaching a steep hill, what changes should you make to your driving technique to maintain control of your vehicle? A. Accelerate rapidly to get up the hill quickly. B. Decrease your speed and use a lower gear if necessary. C. Maintain your normal driving speed regardless of the incline. Answer. B. Decrease your speed and use a lower gear if necessary. Using a lower gear helps maintain power and control when ascending or descending steep hills. Question 22. Explain the correct procedure for using your vehicle's high beams at night when other vehicles are present. A. Use high beams only when no cars are visible in the opposite direction. B. Keep high beams on at all times for maximum visibility. C. Toggle between high and low beams as cars approach to signal them. Answer. A. Use high beams only when no cars are visible in the opposite direction. It is important to switch to low beams when vehicles are approaching to avoid blinding other drivers. Question 23. What should you do if you encounter a school zone sign while children are present, but school is not in session? A. Ignore the sign since school is not in session. B. Observe the school zone speed limit only during school hours. C. Continue to observe the school zone speed limit while children are present. Answer. C. Continue to observe the school zone speed limit while children are present. It is important to ensure the safety of children around school zones at all times. Question 24. How should you react if another vehicle is tailgating you on a freeway? A. Slow down abruptly to discourage the behavior. B. Maintain your speed or slightly increase it to create distance. C. Change lanes when safe to do so and allow the vehicle to pass. Answer. C. Change lanes when safe to do so and allow the vehicle to pass. This is the safest way to handle tailgating and avoids potential accidents. Question 25. Describe the appropriate actions to take if you see a sign indicating a nearby hospital and you are transporting someone in need of emergency care. A. Follow the signs and signal all turns to get to the hospital quickly. B. Exceed the speed limit to get to the hospital as quickly as possible. C. Stop and wait for an ambulance to ensure professional care. Answer. A. Follow the signs and signal all turns to get to the hospital quickly. It's important to remain calm and ensure safe driving even during emergencies. Question 26. What considerations should you keep in mind when driving near large trucks, especially in windy conditions? A. Stay close to the truck to reduce wind buffeting. B. Give trucks more space because they can be affected by strong winds. C. Honk frequently to remind the truck driver of your presence. Answer. B. Give trucks more space because they can be affected by strong winds. Larger vehicles are more susceptible to high winds and may require additional room to maneuver safely. Question 27. How do you determine the proper lane to use when driving on a highway with three lanes in your direction of travel? A. Always use the left lane for higher speed and passing. B. 
Stay in the middle lane for the most flexibility in passing and safety. C. Choose the right lane to go slower or prepare to exit. Answer. B. Stay in the middle lane for the most flexibility in passing and safety. The middle lane is typically the best choice for steady driving with options to pass or change lanes if necessary. Question 28. What steps should you follow if your vehicle's engine starts to overheat while you're driving in heavy traffic? A. Turn off your air conditioner and turn on the heater to help cool the engine. B. Continue driving to find a mechanic immediately. C. Add coolant to the radiator while the engine is hot. Answer. A. Turn off your air conditioner and turn on the heater to help cool the engine. This can temporarily help reduce engine temperature until you can safely address the issue. Question 29. Explain the legal and safety implications of reversing out of a driveway onto a busy street. A. It is generally safe and legal to reverse onto a busy street. B. Reversing onto a busy street is illegal, and you should always turn the vehicle around first. C. You should avoid reversing onto a busy street if possible, as it can be dangerous and is often illegal. Answer. C. You should avoid reversing onto a busy street if possible, as it can be dangerous and is often illegal. It's safer to turn the vehicle around within the driveway if possible. Question 30. How can a driver ensure they are following the speed limit if their vehicle's speedometer is broken? A. Drive at the speed of surrounding traffic. B. Use a GPS device to display your current speed. C. Estimate your speed based on the time it takes to pass fixed objects. Answer. B. Use a GPS device to display your current speed. This is a reliable method to monitor speed accurately when the vehicle's speedometer is not functioning. Question 31. What are the key factors to consider before overtaking another vehicle on a rural road? A. The type of vehicle you are overtaking and the length of the passing zone. B. The weather conditions and the time of day. C. Both A and B are correct. Answer. C. Both A and B are correct. It is important to consider both the type of vehicle and the environmental conditions when deciding to pass on a rural road. Question 32. How should you adjust your driving based on the presence of a two-way traffic sign on a narrow bridge? A. Increase your speed to clear the bridge as quickly as possible. B. Be prepared to stop or yield if the bridge is too narrow for both directions of traffic. C. Ignore the sign as it does not affect the way you should drive. Answer. B. Be prepared to stop or yield if the bridge is too narrow for both directions of traffic. Drivers should be cautious and ready to adjust their driving to accommodate oncoming traffic on narrow bridges. Question 33. What should you do if you are involved in a minor collision in a parking lot where both vehicles can still be driven? A. Leave the scene immediately to avoid confrontation. B. Exchange insurance information and report the incident to the police if required. C. Wait for the police to arrive and determine fault before leaving the scene. Answer. B. Exchange insurance information and report the incident to the police if required. It is important to handle even minor collisions responsibly by exchanging details with the other driver. Question 34. Describe how to properly secure a load on the roof of your vehicle to prevent accidents. A. Use lightweight materials only and drive slowly. B. Ensure the load is evenly distributed and securely fastened with ropes or straps. C. It is not recommended to carry any load on the roof of a vehicle. Answer. B. Ensure the load is evenly distributed and securely fastened with ropes or straps. Properly securing a load is essential to prevent it from shifting or falling while driving. Question 35. What is the procedure for obtaining help if you break down in an area without cell phone coverage, indicated by a telephone available sign having been passed a while ago? A. Wait by your vehicle for another motorist to stop and help. B. 
walk back to the last seen telephone available sign to call for help. C. Attempt to fix the vehicle yourself without seeking help. Answer. B. Walk back to the last seen telephone available sign to call for help. In areas without cell phone coverage, using a designated emergency phone is a safe way to seek assistance. Question 36. How does California law address left turns at intersections where the oncoming traffic has a continuous flow without signals? A. Yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians before making a left turn. B. Complete the turn quickly without yielding. C. Left turns are not permitted at such intersections. Answer. A. Yield to oncoming traffic and pedestrians before making a left turn. It's crucial to ensure the intersection is clear of both vehicles and pedestrians to safely execute a left turn. Question 37. What precautions should be taken when driving through an area with active wildlife during dusk or dawn? A. Increase speed to scare away animals. B. Use high beams when no other vehicles are present and watch for animal crossing signs. C. Ignore animals as they usually avoid roads. Answer. B. Use high beams when no other vehicles are present and watch for animal crossing signs. Being extra vigilant during peak wildlife activity times can help prevent accidents. Question 38. How do you handle a situation where an unmarked car seems to be attempting to pull you over using a siren or flashing lights? A. Pull over immediately. B. Continue to drive to a well-lit public area before pulling over. C. Speed up and escape the situation. Answer. B. Continue to drive to a well-lit public area before pulling over. If you are unsure about the authenticity of the unmarked car, it is safer to stop in a public area. Question 39. What should you do if you find yourself in a situation where road rage is escalating with another driver? A. Escalate the situation to assert your rights. B. Remain calm, do not make eye contact, and try to put distance between you and the other driver. C. Stop your vehicle and confront the driver to resolve the issue. Answer. B. Remain calm, do not make eye contact, and try to put distance between you and the other driver. It is important to avoid escalating the situation and to prioritize safety. Question 40. If a traffic light turns yellow as you approach, but you are too close to safely stop, what is the correct action to take? A. Speed up to beat the red light. B. Continue through the intersection at your current speed. C. Stop immediately, even if you block the intersection. Answer. B. Continue through the intersection at your current speed. If you are too close to the intersection to stop safely when the light turns yellow, you should continue through the intersection carefully. Question 41. How should you respond if you discover your headlights are not functioning properly while driving at night? A. Continue driving and adjust your speed. B. Stop at the nearest safe location to fix the issue or wait until daylight. C. Use your high beams instead, regardless of oncoming traffic. Answer. B. Stop at the nearest safe location to fix the issue or wait until daylight. Driving without fully functional headlights can significantly reduce your visibility and increase the risk of an accident. Question 42. What are the legal consequences for failing to stop for a school bus with its red lights flashing and stop sign extended? A. A warning on the first offense. B. Possible fines and points on your driving record. C. No specific consequences, as long as no children are present. Answer. B. Possible fines and points on your driving record. It is legally required to stop for a school bus with flashing red lights and an extended stop sign to ensure the safety of children. Question 43. Describe the best practice for adjusting your mirrors to minimize blind spots. A. Adjust so you can see the edge of your car and the road behind. B. Position your mirrors to maximize the view of the road beside and slightly behind your car. C. 
use your mirrors to check for traffic directly behind you only. Answer B. Position your mirrors to maximize the view of the road beside and slightly behind your car. Properly adjusted mirrors help reduce blind spots, making lane changes and merges safer. Question 44. What should you do if you encounter a traffic control signal that is out of operation? A. Proceed as if the intersection is uncontrolled. B. Treat the intersection as a four-way stop. C. Continue at your current speed if no traffic is present. Answer B. Treat the intersection as a four-way stop. When traffic lights are out, treating the intersection as a four-way stop ensures that all drivers take turns proceeding safely. Question 45. If you are required to pull over by law enforcement, what are the steps you should follow to do so safely? A. Stop immediately in your current lane of traffic. B. Signal. Pull over to the right as far as possible and wait inside your vehicle with your hands visible. C. Pull over to the left side of the road and exit your vehicle. Answer. B. Signal. Pull over to the right as far as possible and wait inside your vehicle with your hands visible. This procedure ensures safety for both the driver and the officer. Question 46. What is the recommended action if your vehicle starts skidding on an icy road? A. Accelerate to regain control. B. Steer in the direction of the skid and gradually release the accelerator. C. Brake hard to stop the vehicle immediately. Answer. B. Steer in the direction of the skid and gradually release the accelerator. This counter-steering technique helps regain control of the vehicle during a skid. Question 47. How should you handle a situation where debris falls off another vehicle and creates a hazard on the roadway? A. Swerve around the debris and continue driving. B. Maintain your lane and drive over the debris. C. Slow down safely and navigate around the debris if possible. Answer. C. Slow down safely and navigate around the debris if possible. Avoiding sudden maneuvers helps prevent accidents when encountering road debris. Question 48. What are the rules regarding the use of car horns in urban areas? A. Only use the horn in emergencies. B. Use the horn to express dissatisfaction with other drivers. C. Horns can be used at any time for any reason. Answer. A. Only use the horn in emergencies. The horn should be used sparingly and only to alert others to prevent accidents. Question 49. How can you safely navigate a highway exit ramp during heavy rain? A. Maintain normal highway speeds to keep up with traffic. B. Increase your speed to exit the highway quickly. C. Reduce your speed and keep a safe following distance from other vehicles. Answer. C. Reduce your speed and keep a safe following distance from other vehicles. Exiting a highway in heavy rain requires extra caution to avoid hydroplaning and collisions. Question 50. What steps should you take before making a legal U-turn on a busy street? A. Ensure it is legal to make a U-turn at your location, signal, and wait for a gap in traffic. B. Make the U-turn quickly regardless of oncoming traffic. C. Wait for pedestrians to signal you to proceed. Answer. A. Ensure it is legal to make a U-turn at your location, signal, and wait for a gap in traffic. Always confirm that U-turns are permitted and ensure the road is clear before proceeding to turn safely.